Well, good afternoon. Uh, looking back on Saturday, a number of things stuck out. Obviously, the first thing is we got a huge road win um, for our program and for the guys, and I thought that was an exceptional uh, exceptional win. However you get it, obviously it wasn't perfect. I thought we started the game really well, and I thought we finished the game really well. Um, in between, obviously, uh, had some had some hiccups, had some issues. Uh, the great thing when you have success and win, I think sometimes it's easier to go back and, and challenge the guys and say, hey, we, we, we have to improve, and we know we have to improve and get a lot better. I think offensively, a um, couple things stuck out that we need to improve upon would be perimeter blocking. And it's not just wide receivers, it's offensive linemen, tight ends, running backs, because we have to be able to get the edge and we've got to do a better job out there. And then obviously we weren't as good on third down as we'd been in the past. And I think part of that is we were in a lot more third and long situations. Uh, on defense, you know, our, our tackling still has to improve. I, I think Hill's a phenomenal running back and he, he made us you know, earn every hit, uh, but we we've have to continue to improve upon tackling. and then. You know, the sudden change aspect on defense, we talk a lot about that when a sudden change happens off a turnover or something, you have to be able to respond. And, you know, we didn't respond the first time when we fumbled a punt and they scored a touchdown. And then probably the disappointing one was we intercept a pass, they make a good play, strip, strip the ball, and then they take it 79 yards after that to score. So we've got to get better on sudden change. And then uh, obviously in special teams, um, you can't have a penalty. Uh, which we had on a good return, and then we have to field punts. We just we something that uh, we talked about at length yesterday and, and Sunday, and um, uh, something we have to do a better job. And it's guys trying to make a play. I'm not making excuses for them. They're trying to make a play, and and uh, they got to understand the situation. And um, the number one thing we have to do after uh, on a punt return is get possession back for our offense. So. Uh, we'll clean those airs up. We have uh, this week that we're going to spend an awful lot of time uh, on ourselves and continue to improve upon some of the things that we're working on as well as work a lot of younger guys into some, uh, not necessarily roles, but put them into some situations because they haven't gotten a chance to really play much uh, with the, um, the conference or with the non-conference schedule we've had. So open it up for questions. Chris, maybe a silly question, but how do you keep this team hungry after a big one? Well, I think the things I just talked about that were not clicking on all cylinders. I, I believe that uh, you know, we have to stay humble uh, and stay hungry, not be seduced by the success that we have had, that those guys see it, they watch film and say, boy, we, we really could play a lot better on this phase offensively or this phase defensively. And, uh, you know, I was frustrated because I, I think if we – field the punt, we maybe go in 13 nothing, 17 nothing, and maybe it's a different game, you know, and that was a huge momentum. And that's the other thing is, you know, just managing the ebbs and flows of games is something that uh, we've got to continue to improve upon. Obviously, the schedule this week, your assistant um, kind of being on the road recruiting, how valuable is this time to you guys? It's valuable, but it's still not a contact period. It's still an evaluation. So we'll have the assistance here through Thursday. I mean, we're going to get a lot of work done from a practice standpoint and, and meeting standpoint and uh, continue. We're, we're still teaching. You know, we're, we're still um, implementing a lot of the things with our playbooks offensively and defensively. We, can't, we couldn't afford to say, hey, every, every, every coach just get out of here and start going and recruiting. Uh, the most important thing for me is the current football team. And so we have to do a good job of, of continuing to work on fundamentals, techniques, and continuing to teach our offense and defense. Given that the Big 12 is quite a bit different from the conference games you've faced so far, is there any one thing you'll emphasize in the next few weeks to get ready for that? Not any one thing. You know, we'll spend more time on Oklahoma State just because we have, you know, that's the next game in front of us and we have um, at least some film uh, on those guys and, you know, they haven't had the most competitive games uh, in the non-conference, but there's still some things we can work on. So, um, you know, that's probably where our focus will go after we work on ourselves. Is this a situation a little bit like the start of the season when you had a little extra time from nickel to make sure you guys got off to a good, solid foundation start in the non-conference, and now you can replicate that? You can't replicate it totally simply because we didn't know anything, just like you guys didn't know prior to Nickel State of what you were going to see from Kansas State. So now that we do know a little bit about our team, you know, through three games, 
Okay, here's the things we have to work on. Forget who we're playing. Here's the things we have to get better on, whether that's the perimeter blocking, tackling, a certain aspect of special teams, whatever it may be. We have to work on that part, but then absolutely push forward and say, okay, now let's, let's do some scouting. Let's do some scout work um, on our next opponent. Uh, I don't, not necessarily intimidated or intimidating. I think it was just belief that we were going to win. We, we talked in here last Monday that we really believed we had a better football team watching film. Now, would that play out on the field? Um, we thought it could. That guys, You guys played these guys last year. We're watching them on film. Believe we can win this game. Uh, believe it's going to happen. And I, and I thought we finished the game really well. And I think finishing is part of believing. You know, if you believe you're going to get it done, you're going to finish better. And that, that's something that I was so pleased with the guys. There wasn't any panic on the sideline when we got down um, and things weren't going well. You know, if one play happens, all of a sudden your momentum can swing. And that play happened and the momentum did swing back. And then they really took it over from there because I thought in the fourth quarter we, we were the better football team. A little bit you do uh, because you're able to play, you know, a few more guys will we'll rotate a few more uh, younger guys into into the rotation, but you still got to get your work done. There's certain things technique wise where, um, you know, pass rush stuff. We have to continue to work our top guys on pass rush and working with each other. We have to work some coverages where you want to make sure that the linebacker, you know, that Eli's out there with, with J-Mac or that, the, that AJ's out there with Denzel so the communication continues to improve. Same thing offensively, but obviously we, we got through this game really well um, from a health standpoint, so uh, it'll allow us to continue to push those starters forward. Um, I think his body of work is, has been exceptional uh, in the fact that he's done the number one thing we asked him to do, and that's take care of the football uh, and, and lead the team and put us in excellent situations. In the first half, I thought he did a great job. And the thing that I think he's getting so comfortable with is seeing a picture and changing a play. Um, because of the fact we're a huddle team and he's getting the call from, from Coach Mess, implements the call, comes to the line of scrimmage. If there's certain things that we don't like, he has the ability to change those plays, and he's doing a great job of seeing those pictures. Uh, and uh, that's the thing that I think he will continue to improve upon is just seeing more pictures, seeing more, more coverages, seeing more pressure looks within our structure of our offense. And that's something that it's probably a never-ending battle that you're always trying to improve upon, but that's what I, I know that uh, we would like him to continue to work on. The defense is really off to a hot start. How anxious are you to see what this defense can do in the big world? Well, I'm anxious to see just because I, I think we on defense need to get so much better and so much cleaner. When I say cleaner, maybe it's in, it's in a fit and we don't have two guys in the same gap. Maybe it's in a coverage and we don't – pass something off that we should have passed off on a on a on an exchange route and um the fact that we're we're just scratching the surface i think defensively what we can be um and we also know we have to play better on defense uh in a league that we're going into with the conference schedule we have because everybody can run it and everybody can throw it where you know, this past week, our number one goal was to stop and slow down the run game. And if they got us through the air, that was how they were going to have to do it. And I thought for the most part, you know, Hill had his yards, but he didn't have the explosive plays. We did a nice job of getting him into, the, into some long yard situations. They both practiced yesterday, you know, which was good. Now, Today will be a contact day. I don't think either one of them will have contact, but I, I'm very hopeful but that uh, they'll be you know, pushed into normal normal practice play by Wednesday or Thursday. I also want to ask about the running back rotation. Uh, Jordan actually had a pretty pretty good game early and put up some good numbers, but then you guys shifted and James mostly late. Is there a reason why you guys favor him in those situations? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, I... The first thing I'd say is in the third quarter, it didn't matter who the running back was, we were on defense the whole time. So 
that was <laughs> you could have been anybody. I, it, we were we were so poor uh, in, in the third quarter of getting off the field and staying on the field. And really, you're, it, it, in essence, it turned into the last two drives where it was a little bit James, but no, nothing that sticks out. Crossing my quotes here, on the punt return, was that almost like a young center fielder not knowing when to go for the catch? And when you just I, th I think on the second one it was. You know, the first one was we just muffed it. It was kicked at us and we muffed it. The second one, um, it was it was deflected, which changes everything uh, as far as you know whether it's the spin to the knuckleball to whatever but yeah it, it's so in my opinion it's so much easier to go back on a punt than it is ever to come up on a punt it was decades ago but I used to return punts and going back is much easier than going forward um, and uh, you know when, when you are going forward you're better off letting it bounce even if you you lose the yards you're gaining the possession back I thought one was a was a poor penalty on, on his part. I thought the other one, I, I didn't think it was a penalty to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, uh, you had two bye weeks this year. Is that do you typically? That's kind of unusual. Do you typically like to have that? Um, it, it is a little unusual. Um, I love to have it before you get into conference play. You know, I think that's that's big. You play your non-conference. You learn more about your team. You learn more what you have to do uh, in certain phases of the game. You know, uh, then we're gonna have we're gonna have a second one. Yeah, I wish that were a little bit later in the season rather than just playing two games and then having another bye. But that's just the way the the schedule lays out. Um, uh, but uh, you know, there's something about football to a rhythm that you you know you're playing well. You want to stay into a rhythm, but there's also uh, it's easy to say as a coach. It's not easy to say when you're an O-lineman or D-lineman and you've played five, six, seven in a row and you're like, holy cow, this would be a good time to, to get my body back. So uh, I, I think this year the way it plays out, um, we're taking great advantage of it this week because of what has happened in the non-conference and we'll, we'll talk about when we get to the next one. The fact that you're a new staff also, does it, does it maybe give you a little extra time to work, to work out some kinks? Um, I don't think the staff has anything to do with it, so to speak, uh, just because um, they're all seasoned, seasoned veteran guys that have, you know, some have worked together, but we got a good camaraderie there, so um, that, I don't think that plays into the open week part of it. Well, he's so smart. He knows everything about our defense, which is great. Uh, he knows what it means when the back's on the side of the tight end or the back's away from the tight end and the tight end's on the ball, the tight end's off the ball, whatever it may be. He's, he gets the game. The game slows down for Trey because he's, he works at it hard. He watches a ton of film. He's playing at a really high level. He played a phenomenal football game on Saturday. Our defensive line in general played dynamite uh, on Saturday. Um, as far as they shut down the run um, and some of the plays that bounced, maybe a linebacker or, or safety, you know, maybe missed a tackle or got bounced off, but I think our defensive line played exceptionally well. Uh, and, and he's a catalyst in there at the D tackle spot because he's played so much football and the guys trust and listen to him. That's over my head. That's a Kenny question or somebody. I, I, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, and, you know, I think from a recruit standpoint or a young person standpoint, I think whatever uh, network, whatever streaming it would be on, people have the ability to see it. But, you know, those are things that we can't control. He's playing really well. He was one of our players of the game uh, in the defensive line. He's a pretty quiet kid, uh, but uh, uh, he he plays with an unbelievable motor. Uh, another really really smart, savvy guy. 
uh, that as the game goes on, he sees tendencies, he sees uh, mechanics, techniques of offensive linemen and takes advantage of them. Uh, he had a number of plays in the backfield. Uh, he's just he's playing at such a high level, and, and it's great because it, it'll. I, I think with people sometimes, you know, keying on Trey, um, it allows Jordan to make some plays, and, and Jordan's taken full advantage of it. He's, uh, you know, in the rotation. He's moved into a starting role. We're going to always play a. a, a at least three if not four guys and we played five guys at D tackle this week so we're always going to play guys there uh, but uh, so excited about uh, um, how much he's grown within understanding our system on the defensive line and he's a big time playmaker. Well I, I think for starters it's it's you know the, the, the eye candy the eye piece of seeing it will be really cool uh, it, it'll generate more revenue, which will benefit the student athletes um, from a recruiting standpoint. Just to be able to tour guys through there and, and see another um, expanded area that's renovated, that's you know, suite type, and I think all that stuff is is going to be valuable in the recruiting process. Um, but uh, I think it shows. Our players, it shows the student athletes, or excuse me, it shows the recruits the continued commitment that Kansas State is making towards all of its athletic teams of, of continuing to enhance um, <coughs> facilities. How vital was uh, Denzel Grillsby play and his kind of steady, calm leadership for the first game on the road? He's playing really, really well. Um, and uh, each game he gets more and more comfortable. Uh, I challenge Denzel to be more vocal uh, on the field in practice because he has so much to give and people so, so respect Denzel and, he, and uh, he's that calming force like you say out there. Um, and, and he's tackling exceptionally well right now. He is, but, but I, I watch him tackle and he's tackling really well and he, he's one of our leading tacklers, but I watch the way he practices. And even when we're not in a live tackling part of practice, which you can't really be in much during when you get in the season, he's running to the spot and tagging off as if he's in the perfect hit position, um, which I think is going to help these younger guys because a lot of these younger guys are learning how to practice, and Denzel has mastered how we want him to practice. And what did you see from Walters, Phil Enns, uh, Pete Brown, and Travis? Uh, Kiwi, I thought, played a f great football game, and we put an awful lot on his plate. We, th we weren't sure. We really thought Walt had a chance. That's why we dressed him. Um, but he couldn't go after warm-up, so Kiwi took the lion's share of the, of the reps in practice, although Walt took some reps, and so he was thrust into it. And the thing that impressed me the most about Kiwi is we gave up the touchdown before half, uh, which I thought he was in good position. They made a great throw and catch, and, and Kibi was right there. Didn't phase him. He came out and played a really good second half, and he was on two special teams. We finally took him off a special team because he, like everybody else that was playing that much, was cramping. So he was cramping so much that we had to take him out and put D-pad in. Um, and I think they saw, okay, you got another corner in the game. They went after him late, and he and Denzel break up a, a big-time play in the uh, – a pylon of the end zone that you know was uh, a shot play for them to try to tie it and so Deepat came in and did a great job it's it's we've talked as a staff it's given us so much more confidence moving forward that we have more guys at that position and that's something that we didn't know um, prior to the season Kiwi had played some um, but we wanted to see him in a in in the fire and I thought both those guys did a great job Uh, it's just a mantra that, that Ben Newman brought to us, uh, and there's a book uh, that a number of us read, and it's just, it's just daily, uh, the nonstop grind of continuing um, to believe and continue to, to continue to go to work, Con you know, no matter what's in front of you, continue to pound the stone, take everything out of your mind when you come to the practice field, take everything out of your mind when you're in the meetings, and it's a daily grind that those guys truly believe that if I keep pounding the stone, and I keep grinding and I keep hammering away at that thing every day and I don't take any days off and I don't take any shortcuts, 
that when I get into a tight moment like we were in on, on, on Saturday, um, if you continue to pound the stone and continue to have great work ethic and continue to believe, good things are going to happen. Um, I, I couldn't tell you that. I'm, I'm happy, obviously, that we're three and zero. But we, big picture, we haven't started conference play yet. We know every game uh, is going to be a dogfight. We know that whatever you did last week has no bearing on the next week. So you better just you put your head down and go to work and make sure that you're preparing every every day to be successful on Saturday. Thrilled that we're three and zero, but uh, we have a lot of work to do. Confidence, confidence, and a playmaker, and a guy that wants to be put on the spot, a guy that wants to be challenged, uh, taking on a leadership role. I don't know if he did that last year, but he's doing all those things that I see uh, that a dominant number one corner can do, will do, and wants to be in that spotlight. And um, fun, fun player to watch. He's a great player. All right, appreciate it. Thanks.